Hello gamers and thank you for watching. There are a lot of new leaks about God of War Ragnarok. I will share now some with you guys. If you want to see the boss fights early, please also leave a comment mentioning this. From the leaks we got so far, we learned that Atreus will be a playable character during the story, something we were expecting to see. He's now battle hardened and will use multiple special attacks. Another thing would be that the game will start with a boss fight between Thor and Kratos. It seems it will start right from where the first part left off. Let's now watch some more information and find out everything that has been said and leaked so far about God of War Ragnarok. Just so you know, the game will be available on both PS4 and PS5 and I will post a video comparison on the channel between the two. There have been some leaks about the game, some less credible than others. But one interesting one is that the game will have about 40 hours of gameplay. This includes side stories also. And the same article from Insider Gaming says that the cutscenes will be about 3 hours and a half to 4 hours long. So the game might have a hard 36 hours of pure gameplay. Which seems a lot and it's also double actually than the one the God of War 2018 had. 20 hours and a half to complete the main story and about 50 hours to complete the entire game. We could expect in this case about 72 hours to get the completion for Ragnarok, but that's not certain. Another thing indicating the length of the game is the file size, which will be around 90.6 GB on the PS4, and this is double actually the size that the game had in 2018. A new short God of War Ragnarok trailer has been shared online, showing more info about the game. We thus learn that on the PlayStation 5 version there are immersion features like 3D audio and haptic feedback. The trailer also confirms that the PS5 bundle, including a regular version of the console and a copy of the game, will launch on November the 9th. We don't know the price for the bundle, but previous bundles like Horizon Forbidden West was $550 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 bundle will cost $560, so we could expect something similar around that price, $550 to $560. We also know that there will be God of War Ragnarok Collector's Edition and the Jotnar Edition. For $2000 you will get the Collector's Edition come with a full game for the PS4 and PS5, a Dwarven die set, a couple of 2 inch vanier twigs carvings, a steelbook display case, the Knowledge Keeper's Shrine, in-game content and the 16 inch Mjolnir replica hammer. But there is more. For $260, the Jodnar edition includes the same extras as the Collector's Edition, as well as Brooks Dice Set 7-inch vinyl feature music from Bear McCrary, a Yggdrasil Cloth Map, and a Falcon Bear and Wolf Pin Set. About the story, we know that Kratos and Atreus must journey to the end of the Nine Realms in search of answers as Asgardian forces prepare for a prophesied battle that will end the world. Along the way, they will explore stunning mythical landscapes and face fearsome enemies in the form of Norse gods and monsters. The threats of Ragnarok grow even closer, Kratos and Atreus must choose between their own safety and the safety of the realms. Thor and the other Norse gods are out for revenge after Kratos killed multiple deities in the first game. As we said earlier, you will be able to travel to all nine realms, these include Midgard, Alfheim, Helheim, Mospelheim, Niflheim, Jotunheim, Vanaheim, which is the new one, Svartalheim again, which is the new one here, and Asgard also. We have a lot of changes and a lot of new details since God of War 2018. The Lake of Nine is frozen solid now and you will use Sled Wolves, Spiki and Svana to move around the area. In other areas where there are lakes and rivers, you will still use the canoe. But these various means of travel suggest a journey vaster and bolder than what came before. Lead level designer James Riding and level designer John Hickenbottom said we wanted to evolve the gameplay in the level spaces, more variety and verticality. In Svartalheim we've got a lot of places that you can go to all within one realm, it's so much content. So the world will be way bigger and full of stuff to do and explore. It seems we will be able to explore all the 9 realms, even the ones from 2018's God of War. There will be a lot of new puzzle types and a massive world to explore. What we've seen in Svartalheim is a giant industrialized dwarven realm complete with technical marvels like mine pits, artificial water channels and sprawling cities. Kratos will be freezing geysers with the Leviathan Axe and breaking obstacles with the Blades of Chaos. 
Next to this, we also know from previous leaks that Thor and Odin will be central figures in the game. Odin will have a huge role, but I've left a link in the description discussing the official leaks about Odin and what is his role in the plot. Because of a scan of a notebook that uh, would accompany the game, we have found some new important information about the plot of the game. If these will be true or not, it remains to be seen, but at least they do seem quite credible and extremely interesting. These images still have some important illustrations and descriptions. The text describes one of the principal plot conflicts in particular and explains the motivation of a character. Kratos is going to face his frightened foe, the Allfather Odin. He is a scientist in the dark magic arts and is a very smart warrior. He doesn't hesitate to use spells as much as a magician. For Kratos, he is the ultimate nightmare scenario, a surrogate father tempting his son down a dark path, offering what Kratos cannot. For Atreus, Odin is both the key to his potential and the thing that keeps him from achieving it. Odin is, without a doubt, the most dangerous enemy ever to appear in a God of War series. In addition to the page dedicated to Odin, we also see pictures of Draugr's elves and Thor. He also appears and we can expect also a fight between Thor and Kratos, one that it's quite obvious from the old trailer that we had. Cory Barlog, a director and a producer of God of War, took to Twitter to express his frustration with leaks. He did not mention the title of God of War, but it is quite probable he was referring to these recent leaks. Ragnarok lead combat designer Mihir Shet explained how the triangle button has been re-implemented to do far more than just recall Kratos' Leviathan X. The developers introduced a whole new style of attack that's activated through the triangle button's previously unused state. These will be called weapon signature moves and infuse either the Leviathan X or Blades of Chaos with elemental damage such as Ice and Fire, known as Frost Awaken and Whiplash. It has also been revealed that the game will bring two new arm shields, Dauntless and Stonewall. These can offer a damaging bonus move for a last second pairing or a kinetic blast after absorbing damage. The Dauntless shield is all about Twitch reactions. By pairing at the last possible moment, Kratos' shield glows a menacing red, signaling the player can unleash a devastating smash that tosses and stuns enemies. At the opposite end, the Stonewall shield is for people that prefer slower paced actions. Kratos can parry when equipped with the Stonewall, so keeping it raised is crucial to surviving hits. The more hits the Stonewall shield takes, the more kinetic energy it absorbs. And once it's fully charged, players can bang the shield into the ground emitting a screen white pulse, knocking anything approaching Kratos' feet. But all that protection comes at a cost. The Stonewall shield becomes increasingly unstable as it takes damage, opening Kratos up to otherwise ineffective block-breaking shots. We also got to find out that old locations are periodically repopulated with more fauna. Last year's trailer unveiled also an elk runic summon for Atreus to ride, so hopefully we'll see other new abilities soon. It is not clear if Kratos will wield other weapons, but people are hoping they will get to see Thor's hammer in action, Mjolnir in Kratos' hands. Other details confirmed include heightened aggression and lethality on harder difficulties, and some formidable side content for fans of the previous game's realm tiers. From the beginning we know that Tyr will be present, Kratos will be the one rescuing him, we learn this from the trailer. Kratos and Tyr will team up against Odin from what it looks like. One of the few key details known about Tyr from the old Norse myths is that he lost his hand when the gods chained up Fenrir, the gigantic wolf. In the tale, Tyr promises Fenrir that they will also chain him up to test his strength, but the great wolf doesn't believe him, so Fenrir asks Tyr to put his right hand in his jaws. If he can break free, he will release it. But if he can't, he will eat it. In the end, Fenrir couldn't escape and so Tyr lost his hand. Fenrir is one of Loki's third children, the same as the world serpent or Jormungandr. A bit of a spoiler here, Atreus could be the version of Loki here. This is something that could refer to what Freya found on his necklace. Maybe something pointing to Atreus' true nature. Odin makes an appearance as an old man in the last trailer that we got. He also was confirmed as a boss in the game, Richard Schiff will be the character's voice. 
Most likely, he's the one disguised as an old man. The traveler Odin often appeared in stories as a meek old man seeking shelter and hospitality. Letting him in would grant the householders a boon, whereas turning him away would see them suffer. Maybe what will follow Atreus' decision could give us a tip into what might come next, either a help or issues for Atreus and Kratos as the story progresses. Odin is ever seeking power and knowledge, he's the old father, the king of the nine realms, and he wants to keep it that way. In particular, he seeks out prophecies regarding his future. Odin must know that Ragnarok has already begun. It starts with the death of Baldr by Loki's hand at the onset of the Fimbul Winter. Both of these events ended in the previous game. And so he's presumably trying to convince Kratos and Atreus from doing anything else that might speed up the process. In the Norse myths, Odin was the one all battles were dedicated to, and he oversaw them all, sending down Valkyrs to claim half of the fallen warriors. As a result, for what happened in the previous game, Freya is no longer an ally to Kratos now. After killing his son Baldr, now she seeks revenge. Freya also has a twin brother called Feir, and we might expect to see him make an appearance here. Freya is also the goddess of Folkvanger, another afterlife filled with flowers where the other half of the nobles dead, not claimed by Odin, are taken. This is important because the space could be one that we get to explore more. A story regarding her is that she lost her necklace to Loki, and Heimdall was the one who recovered it. But that necklace she finds on Atreus' neck could actually be hers. It is going to be interesting to see how the story will unfold and we can understand why the developers want to keep the story a secret. Thor will be again one of the bosses that we get to fight, this is clearly shown in the last trailer that we got. Thor is meant to be red-haired with a bushy beard and is said to be incredibly strong in the Norse mythology and this is the way it is depicted in God of War also. The reason he makes an appearance is because Kratos killed his two sons Magni and Modi. The reason why Thor might be a boss we fight in multiple battles is because it looks like he is present at Kratos' house and in the fight we get to see him out in the frozen lake of the Nine, so it's quite possible players will have to face off against him multiple times. In the myth of Ragnarok, Thor is killed while fighting Jormungandr and yes, it is a spoiler, but we might expect Thor to end that way in the game also. From the last trailer, we also got to see Kratos battling two Valkyries, which will be some of the bosses that you encounter in the game. They appear to have a much more story-focused role and could be mandatory bosses you need to fight and you need to defeat in order to have the story progressed. In the mythology, the Valkyries descended upon the field of battles, taking one half of the noble death to Odin in Valhalla and the other half to Freya in Folkvanger. The Valkyries have also a queen, Freya was substituted by Sigrum, the last Valkyrie you get to defeat in God of War 2018. In the trailer, we also get to see wolves, Hati and Skoll who, according to Ragnarok prophecy, when the world ends, Skoll will devour the sun and Hati will devour the moon. This will lead to great disorder and to the fall of the gods, something that Odin tries to avoid. In the last trailer, we also get to see mermaids. They are normally associated with floods, storm, shipwrecks, drownings and similar disasters, something maybe that will be part of Ragnarok. Mermaids appeared as early as 1000 BC in Syria and have representations in most of the continents like Europe, Asia, Africa and so on. In Norse mythology, we have Ran, which was a goddess and a personification of the sea. Since we do see a similar creature in the water in the trailer, this makes us think about the possibility of having this god present, maybe even as an ally. This makes us think about another god, Njordr, in the Norse mythology, the god of the wind and of the sea and its riches. He was the father of Freyr and Freya, the giantess Skadi was his wife. We also must know that all nine realms will be available in the game, meaning also Asgard, Vanaheim and Svartalheim. Asgard is the home of the Aesir, the major gods, this is where Odin and Thor came from and maybe the battlefield in which Kratos will finally bring the old father down. Vanaheim is the home of Vanir, the magical gods, it is where Freya once lived and we might encounter her here or maybe even her brother. Svartalheim will be a complex region with complex puzzles and different levels stacked upon each other. Since we know the dwarves were good at crafting, we might expect to find interesting gear here, which we can purchase and also upgrade it in the same location. 
What we know is also that Anger Boda is also present in the game. She was Loki's wife and mother of Jormungandr. Surely she will have an important role in the game and also might be close to Atreus, seeing that Atreus could be the version of Loki. Hope this video worked well for you, thank you very much for watching the entire video, don't hesitate to like the video and subscribe and I wish you all the best, goodbye.